Hey everyone, in our latest Traded Black podcast, we touch down on the streets of Chicago with some of the biggest names in cannabis at the latest Benzenga Capital Conference. And what are some of the things that we learned? Why you shouldn't be dependent on legislation change when it comes to equity investing. Probably news that you already knew. Why? We break it all down right now in our latest Trade to Black podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to Trade to Black here on the Dales Report. We are in downtown Chicago this week for the Benzenga Conference, getting a little update on this cannabis industry. And right now with our podcast, we're happy to bring in the co-founder of uh, Polaris, or I should say Polaris Equity Group, Rob Seacrest. Rob, great to see you. How are things, brother? It's good, good. It's uh, We hit the ground running this morning. Um, we had uh, our VIP conference with... Yeah. Uh, with the CEOs and top tier people um, for that Benzinga put together of about probably 40 people. And um, the highlight of that was Ben Clover giving some of his insights on, on what's going on. And um, what was some of the feedback that you heard from him? Yeah, so my takeaway from that was my question to him was, you know, um, regarding 280E, are you, how do you think about the solving that issue? Because if you, to solve that issue, in reality, what that means is that you have to come up with an excise tax to replace it because the, the federal government is never going to let that go right, right. without something to replace the, the tax revenue. Good point. And, um, you know, it, it was a pretty controlled environment and, and not a whole lot of time, but he, he he's like, look, we're, we think it's important. He stayed very generalized. He didn't really answer that question, but the takeaway was, which is, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to, to admit, is that I didn't know that some states don't let you write off your expenses in, that are medical, that are medical uh, cannabis states. And so I had just mistakenly assumed that every state, that did. every state, if as you press legislation. Well, what are some of the states that don't allow that? Do you know? Illinois. Wow. So all 4,000 of their employees that are based in this state, he doesn't get to write off. And so that wow. was that was uh, that was a big takeaway for me. I I did not, you know, I speak a lot about this industry. It's a very complex industry. I'm not an operator, so yeah. I, I'm not on that side. But that's something that I, I did not know. Hmm. We've done one transaction in Illinois, and that didn't come through in the financials. We did acreage holdings here, so um, and that transaction went very well. We've already been paid off on it, but. Um, that was the takeaway there. So you just never know where you're going to find these tidbits of information, and and that's just some of them. Other things I can't always share, you know, no, know. for them. But you know, the amount of intelligence that that we get from here, and I think anybody is going to get. You can't know this invent industry. You can't invest in this industry unless you're here absorbing the information. You're not going to go buy a house without doing an inspection. One hundred percent. Put in the time. And come to a, con a conference like this, the next one I think will be in Miami, um, is their, generally their largest conference uh, that they do each year. But yep. the amount of intelligence that you learn, and it's not necessarily from going and attending the, the panels or the, the speaks, it's, it's getting to know people. It takes time to build these relationships. And as you get to know people, you, you learn who, just like on Twitter, there are certain people that you wouldn't follow because you don't think that they have the mm -hmm. veracity of mm -hmm. intelligence, um, market intelligence, yeah. not, not brain intelligence. But, you know, you, you as you start to build confidence in somebody, it's somebody that you start leaning into and building that relationship with them. Yeah. And I think that one of the first things that I would tell people, if you're going to be in this industry, you better know what's happening on the ground. So for those that can't make the event in Chicago, um, what would you say the sentiments right now? Because from what I've heard is that a lot of these smaller companies, it's like they're dragging to the finish line. We can, we're going to see a lot of consolidation right now. That there's a lot of these deals that are taking place are like eye-opening deals where the people with money are obviously going to, I don't want to say reap the benefits, but are in a very good position. But um, if you're if you're an investor in this space, you can't make this event. How do you put it into perspective as to like the vibe that you're seeing and most importantly, information that they can learn from based off of what's happening here this week. Sure. So first, you can be live and watch this event real time. And on the time that we're doing this interview, it's just starting. So I don't know when this will air, yeah. but it's also recorded and you can go watch it on Benzinga. So you can watch the panels, but that's only a part of the experience. And so I've been in pretty much back to back meetings. We got we won last night the award for best lender. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the sentiment is you know, what people are willing to tell us. And so, which is what, you know, if it's somebody that's coming to us for a loan as a borrower, 
they're not going to necessarily share that if they're a distressed uh, transaction right off the bat. Right. So it'll take us a little bit of time to dig into that because they don't want us to shy away. So we're not having anybody come up to us and tell us, hey, we're, that's, you know, things are about to hit the wall. We, we need you guys to come in and, and lend to us. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't had any of that. Our portfolio is, 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 is performing. So we're not seeing that level of, of things happen. We're, we hear of it. We're seeing transactions come to us through uh, brokers and things like that that are some distressed transactions. That's going to happen. Look, we're going through an economic cycle right now. Yeah. It's, it's not exclusive to the cannabis industry. Uh, we've got rising costs for, for materials. We've got inflation. We've got uh, a labor market shortage. Mm -hmm. And this is a, mm -hmm. a specialized industry. It's even harder to, to solve for here. And so that that's just part of the, the natural cycle. It's mm -hmm. not like this industry is, is a, the only one being hit. Now, mm -hmm. I've always said that I believe that this industry will be hit less than other industries. But when I say that, I mean in the $25 billion of annual revenue each year, that maybe it doesn't grow um, by projected 10% or whatever it was going to be. Maybe it only grows by 5%. So that money is still going to be spent. It's just a matter of where it goes, where it flows to. And some businesses, if they don't, if they blew all their money out on OPEX and, and didn't save for CAPEX, um, you know, or sorry, versus on, on CAPEX, on capital improvements, and they didn't say anything for operational, they're going to be in a bad situation. Yeah. They're going to need to start selling assets. And that's where guys that have the uh, liquidity and the availability to, to put out capital can take advantage of those distressed situations. And so, unfortunately, when you go through cycles like this, this is where investors, some of the investors make some of the most money. We don't play in that side. We yeah. are only a, a debt lender. So we're looking at transactions. So if, if there was a distressed transaction out there, somebody would bring that to us and somebody would say, hey, I've got this purchase price on this asset. We would research that. And what we like about that is, is that the asset doesn't mean that it was bad. It was just a bad operator. So yeah. it's our job to understand right. what is necessary for this property to be repositioned for this particular new cannabis use tenant, which theoretically should be a 10% budget shift as a, if it's completed as opposed to a brand new build. You're, you're a wealth of knowledge. Um, you're invited to a lot of these Benzanga events as a keynote speaker. Uh, as I said before, uh, co-founding of the Polaris Equity Group, which is based at a Newport Beach. Um, you've really become one of the great thought leaders within the space. There's a lot of people learning more and more about the information that you're sharing. We've had you on podcast before, and you've had some insightful information about how a lot of investors need to like kind of reset their expectations related to this industry. So as we sit here and have more conversations with you and you kind of guide us in this direction, um, you talked even about reintroducing the Cole Memo and mm -hmm. about how safe banking needs to be maybe pushed to the side. But do you care to elaborate on that, what you mean by that? So that way investors have a more calculated decision when it comes to understanding what the landscape is when, it, uh, it, when investing uh, sure. in the space? Sure. So the first thing, um, you know, you and I haven't known each other that long, but, but our thesis has always been this is too new of an emerging market to necessarily be betting on the equity investments because we still don't know as it, as the industry is emerging who's going to be the winner and the mm -hmm. loser. Mm -hmm. And unless you're betting on all of them mm -hmm. and you have enough to spread around and then, then you're not, not making enough on any one of them, it doesn't really make the investment thesis work. So our strategy has always been to come in at the debt level, make sure that, that our borrower uh, and our borrower's tenant is able to pay the rent, the, the rent you know for the for leasing that property so that we did de-risk it to even be in the industry so that's how we felt comfortable now ironically after we emerged into the industry and lending in the sector we did pick up some upside which is very rare that a lender would ever have that so okay. now we've got not only the debt secured but with monthly distributions um, and theoretically in 4.2 years with our fund you would get 100% of your capital back and then be playing with the house's money we just that, that was that's our strategy so yeah. if you're in the equity markets I, I can't speak to what their situation is there but from here this point here and me forward is is that look if you're on the equity side I would try to be in a position where whatever investment you're making is not dependent on legislation changing mm -hmm. it uh, legislation happens incrementally slow and it always goes a, a direction that actually probably is going to have more, uh, 
uh, repercussions that are worse than what it tried to fix. Okay. And so even if you, be careful for what you wish for, okay. is what I'm saying. So I would change my strategy going forward to one, not be, not doing any investments based on what the re legislation is going to do. At some point in my- Which is smart. My, my prognostication is it could be at least another administration till we get to something substantial for deconflicting federal policy from, from state policy. Um, you know, the, the, the most important one being 280E. If mm -hmm. we could get that, mm -hmm. that specific lane uh, addressed, that's 50% of the revenues are going to taxes for most mm -hmm. operators. That was a quote from, from Ben. And so if you can operate with those things being in place, maybe just beginning by, it's a, long, it's a long play and that's okay to be here in a long time, but don't think that you're going to be flipping the stock. You know, this is a long hold. And if you already have positions in the ones that are profitable, that you've done the research, you went to the stores, yeah. you went to multiple yeah. stores, you watch people come into the store and see what they did, not in just the, the, the store next to your house, but one in, a, in a, a high end market and a low end market, because there's a different disparity of the customers. Does that brand that you invested in have a low end product and a high end product? Yeah. These are things, that was another thing I just came out of a meeting with, with a, one of the best known brands in the world. And which they, is, I, I, I don't want to share that, <laughs> but the, the, uh, they do have a low end brand, but the disconnect for this particular company is, is that the, the, the uh, the relationships between the two brands are not the same uh, owners all the way through. Okay. And so the throughput for that strategy of having a lower brand doesn't work. So you've got to be able to pick up the low end market. For example, you might do. How do you see branding working in this space? So I'm not on I, that side, but I but, know. But, but it, so you, you know, must hear stories like look at the, the the award show last night, burner with cookies was offered $800 million for this company. And he said, you know, go pound salt and walked away. But that, that's pretty impactful and a lot of leverage, obviously, to walk away from a deal of that size. But it's incredible what he's done with all the uh, legalities and restrictions with branding, how he's built this, you know, huge brand across the U.S. that people are very familiar with. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to mimic off of that. So, so Cookies, we believe, is one of the most well-known, well-respected, highest brand equity brands in the world. Mm -hmm. And Cookies is one of those brands that you, it, it's it's a, it's a privately held company, so there's no real, real ability to mm -hmm. invest in that. Mm -hmm. um, and that particular brand is a, an, an enormous brand equity, but you have to think it through uh, uh, on, that, on that brand. How do they maintain being asset light their model is asset light. They don't own any of the facilities. They don't have any direct control over that. And so as you continue to expand and expand and expand, how do you maintain control over your product as you get bigger and bigger and bigger and need to make sure that you control that that quality of that product and the production right. year after year after year as things are things are shifting around? I think that that's something that they really need to think about and, and, and are probably gonna have to consider at some point when you have people producing products for you all over the all over the, the, the state and the and the world, it's you must maintain that brand equity at all costs. Yeah. And and that is a difficult thing to do when you're not in direct control necessarily. Right. All you can do is say, you either match my product quality or I walk. Well, that's fine. There may not be a whole lot of other places to walk, especially when you want to do it. So as much as they might think that they have the leverage that's only to mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. when they tell you they're going to stop it's like you, the most leverage is to say i'm leaving but but you really can never really say that until you've already got production ramped up at another facility and then tell them that you're leaving and then you've burnt a bridge too and if it doesn't work out over here you got a bad situation do you see that unfolding um i don't necessarily see that unfolding so i have been to facilities um in in other states um I let's think, dive in deep a little bit so that way people understand kind of like what your equity firm does and a little bit more sure. about like it's a lot of real estate related to the cannabis industry so yeah. maybe elaborate on yeah that. so we're a real estate lender for the cannabis uh, specialty use properties we lend to the owners of commercial real estate with cannabis use tenants our specialty is is building those types of facilities so we've done i believe 71 transactions for about 450 million 453 million with about half of that paying off over the last uh, four and a half years and we have done we've financed about 4.2 million square feet we believe our facilities that we lent on probably generate 15% of the entire 
revenue of the entire country ever in a year. Impressive. So, you know, that that's kind of our, our wheelhouse. We've looked at 2000 transactions and we see transactions every day. So we have the most robust real time information coming in, not only on the real estate side, but from the tenant side, the operator side. So we know what the price per pound, what the cost to build is in real time at all places across the country, whether we're lending there or not. Gotcha. And so that's what we do. But back to the point about how does cookies maintain their quality of product? They, it's all, this relation, this industry is a community. It's all about relationships. And I've been to a facility recently um, in New York, uh, New Jersey, and that facility was one of them that that manufactures for cookies. And the quality of the cookies product was so good that I actually had to change a position that I had previously always been saying is that I don't see the Eastern Seaboard being able to compete with California right, right. because it's like Napa. That's where all the wine, but it's more than the, the it's the knowledge base of the people that grow it. Right. So you have to have not only the environment, you can artificially create the environment with cannabis, but if the people don't know how to grow it, then they're, you're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Well, I had previously prognosticated that, you know, it's going to be years before that level of, of quality of product can be reproduced in other state, other states. And now after seeing that facility, I'm like, dang, okay, I'm going to have to change my position on that. They're, they're, they're there. They're so can you maybe touch on like, what do you, what'd you see? You know, really... uh, it was a cultivation facility. Um, and, uh, this cultivation facility, grows for for several brands and cookies was one of their yeah, brands yeah. and this facility is a <clears throat> top tier facility it does top tier quality product um and uh wholesale is a big thing right now is it not well so this facility um i didn't I, it was just a courtesy tour of, of a very well respected person in the industry showing me one of their their assets um just because i was in in the area um and i think it was he was very proud to to show us and and, and rightly yeah, so yeah um but I didn't happen to ask that question. Generally, I will uh, ask that that question. What what? How much of your facility uh, is ex? If you have excess production, then you sell it to wholesale. This particular state, I don't think there was any excess production. So mm. so I think that they were growing everything they possibly could for the brands that they were. I believe there was three. Hmm. So let's wrap things up. If you're uh, like I said, people can obviously stream this online right now. They can actually review obviously the conference later this week. Um, with what, what took place and, and find out like all, all the conversations and presentations that took place. But we again talked about the coal memo. We talked about 280E. What do you think is the footprint of this industry uh, over the next year? So that's tough to say because we're right at a midterm and um, like even yeah. safe bus, there's all this yeah, stuff. So, uh, so it all hinges on the Senate and if there's two senators that aren't willing to um, eliminate the filibuster. Uh, I believe uh, uh, I believe it's Murkow. I can't remember if it's Murkowski and um, Manchin. And so, if those if if there is a net if there is a net swing in the Senate where uh, there are 50 Democratic senators that are are willing to eliminate it, I think they will. Mm. And it's already been openly talked about. And if they uh, put in that nuclear option. I think they would do it for Roe versus Wade. Okay. But what that would do is clear the path for cannabis. Um, so, because now you can get past the filibuster. Gotcha. So you need 50 votes uh, for a uh, uh, simple majority, 60 votes to get past the filibuster. So, the Democrats have openly been talking about eliminating it, and um, I think it's gotten to the point where that they're they're going to do it the problem is is if they it, that most likely the house is going to go to the republicans so do you really want to blow out changing the dynamics of the entire government going forward which w whether that's a good idea or bad just be careful what you wish for you always should ask and then what um but if that happens they've lost most likely the control of the house can they get enough Republicans to support Roe versus Wade? And if they do, that might be the only bill they ever get passed with eliminating the filibuster. So this is where I say- Do you think they will get enough support? Well, I don't know, maybe, but this is what I always say, and then what? Then it's a, it's a lame duck presidency and you be careful what you wish for. The next administration, what happens if it goes Republican? You've just eliminated the filibuster. You're gonna get, this is exactly what happened with, with uh, 
Harry Reid eliminating it for for the comp center uh, for uh, Supreme Court justice confirmations. He did the nuclear option, okay. and then Trump got three three appointed under him. Right. So it's it's it's, it's Harry's like, hey, let's get rid of this so we can get this guy appointed, and and but and then what? Well, now then the Republicans got three of three appointed. Like that didn't work out so good. Well, I think that's why a lot of people are nervous because they are we a going to actually see movement before midterms? Uh, we run out of enough time with Save Plus, and then so oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I would just say I don't don't I would say don't count on anything moving is the is the approach you should take. I would say if the if the if the midterms come out where the, the, the you know in in I, that the Senate is is now weighted towards uh, we've, we've got it so they could get through that that get, eliminating the filibuster. Then there you go. Right. Um, so that that's the one asterisk that could change things. Um, if if that doesn't happen, I don't think anything's going to happen. The the Democrats and I've talked about this in our last podcast. The Democrats are going to are still holding for social equity ref, criminal justice reform, which is very important, but. The, the, the Republicans are are willing to vote with them, but the Democrats are piling on too much stuff that the the, the the Republicans can't get comfortable with it. I think the Republicans want more of a state a state uh, approach as opposed to a blanket federal approach. You surprised in how everything's unfolded? The um, last couple no, of years. I'm I'm in politics really close, and so I've uh, we haven't known each other that long. But this yeah. has been my sentiment the yeah. whole time. I've been the whole the whole time. I've been I, I wouldn't call it a contrarian. I've been a, a, the realist in the room. I think that's the the interesting thing when we're having these conversations with you is, I think at least the sentiment amongst a lot of retail investors or a lot of direction from a lot of the voices within this industry the last couple of years. There's a lot of things that have not happened. And I think we really need to press reset, get some fresh new faces and voices out there that really understand, not to sit here and say others don't, but like you said, just be a realist to manage expectations, I, I, right? I think that a lot of those people believe, I, I think that they believe that. I just don't think they have the um, long-term political experience to realize even when a senator says that they are going to vote for something, what does that really mean? Does that, that, what, so you think so, you think it's a lot of guys with a financial background that don't understand politics, and a lot of lobbyists and politicians are obviously telling what they want to hear. Co co correct. And here, I'll just give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when somebody says we, they usually use the word support. Yes, okay. I support cannabis legalization. Okay. But it's to what range of support? Do I support? Full decriminalization of, of everything across the, the country and restitution for everything. Which, no, which they don't. It's but so do long. I support do I support it being legal so that new people aren't going to jail? Yes. So when when you get these statistics that 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 uh, are, and senators come on and politicians come on the record, it's a broad yes, I support it. But it's the nuances that matter. Right. This uh, Brittany Griner story really opened up a lot of eyes, did it not? Yeah. Uh, I to to me that's. Um, that's just noise. Um, I feel sorry for her, but I mean, I think it really shed a lot of light as to what's going on in her own backyard too. Don't you think? Well, I just think that you never go to another country and, and assume that you, because you're an American that you, you're, you can get through um, and have the privilege to go through with drugs. That, yeah. that is a bad thinking. Um, yeah. uh, there was just yeah. a conference in, in Panama. A lot of people are, are making these mistakes and look, just because it's 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 it, it, even if it's broadly accepted in that country, you're crossing international borders, and there's higher stakes when you're going through there. Is it really worth that? Get your product locally, you know. Um, and so that I, I think that that I think you should always respect the the laws and the customs and cultures of the place that you're at, even if they they conflate with what you're doing. If you're not comfortable with those rules and those uh, laws um, and customs. Don't go there. Yeah, you know. Or if you're going to do it, be, don't get caught. You know? Well, I think that's common sense for sure. I just think a lot of things. Like I even saw Joe Rogan a couple of his podcasts, and it just really shed a light on our system right now within the, within the U.S. That there's a lot of Americans that are spending 30, 40 years in jail for possessions of cannabis, which in a lot of ways is why there's such a huge initiative right now towards social reform. Um, it's it's and that that's not going away but, but go talk to any prosecutor have you ever spoken to a prosecutor they have the most power of anybody in the political spectrum no prosecutor 
goes and puts a person in 30 years for, for drug possession. Okay. They were pled down. What's that? I understand what that means. But. So generally, that's the least charge that they are able to get them, put them in so that to minimize things. So, so that, this is not a, this is not an excuse in any way, and I don't want it taken that way. But prosecutors don't have the resources to prosecute every single crime. They're always pleading every single thing down. So it might have been a possession of a gun that might have had a you know, significantly higher uh, uh, a uh, sentence, and they're pleading it down as low as they possibly can. So that so so you got to take it's, it's the, it's the that... nuances that you need to think through. And some of the stuff I am saying, I don't want it to be controversial that I support uh, people in jail in any way. I just want people to realize that the reason you're not getting Republicans on board with some of these things is most retail people in our in, in political environment don't know how the process works they don't know how um you know they didn't take uh political science to yeah. know every yeah. single nuance and know that how, how important each each you know gascon is not prosecuting people in california that or in los angeles that's great for 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 you know no crime and nobody putting put in jail but it's it's bad for the the the, the minorities that need protection from the bad guys because now the yeah. bad guys can take advantage of them and they don't know there's nothing yeah. happening to them. Yeah. So you you got to look at at all of these things are so much more complex than than the broad statements that are made in in, in through the, the talking heads. It's the nuances that count, especially when you're a specialty asset class like cannabis. Wealth and knowledge. I love this conversation. Plan to obviously have a lot more of these. Uh, if people want to find out more information about what you're doing, do you have a newsletter that people can subscribe? Um, subscribe I think to? we're working on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So All right. The, Website wise. Yeah. Uh, PolarisEquityGroup.com. And, um, you know, if people are looking for on the loan side, they can email info at Polaris Equity Group. If they're looking for investor information, they can in, uh, email IR as in investor relations at PolarisEquityGroup.com. So awesome. Those are the ways. And, um, you know, happy to talk with you guys as much as possible we should do this every I know, week right? you know, we should do our own newsletter because i don't not, think we have one just not in, i love chicago but not, i i would prefer newport beach wouldn't you yeah yeah <laughs> maybe we could do a weekly podcast and, and uh, something like that i would love that uh we actually have people can't see behind the scenes here but our lead financial writer ben <laughs> is driving the vehicle so he's nodding yes that moving the head office to newport beach we just need you to sponsor us How's that hey, hey look that sounds good it's not my office is not fancy but uh uh, it would be great to have you guys there. We don't even need an office. <laughs> a beach is perfectly fine. Right? right? Yeah. Anyways, appreciate your time. No problem. All right. Thanks, thanks Rob. Yep. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, wait until you see what we have next. Some of the best thought leaders in the verticals that we cover, from cannabis and psychedelics to cryptos and NFTs and sports wagering. So if you want to learn more, make sure to click on that bell for all notifications. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.